I was thinking about um, explaining Jaseki just simply, right? Like the, the architecture, the software architecture of Jaseki and Jack, the Jack programming language. And you would not believe how much, like how hard that was, right? And then I realized I was going about it way too the wrong way. So I was starting at the big vision and the big picture, and then I was trying to zoom down into exactly what it actually is from vision down to like the thing. And then I realized, actually, I should literally just do it backwards. Like just start at the thing and then bleed into the vision. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do that today in a video, just so you can simply, simply understand. If you're gonna engage the community, um, you know, we just have so much, things have been snowballing lately around the project. Um, it feels like we've really kind of come into our stride. And so it's really important that I put together some crisp articulations as to what the thing is. And I wanna start for devs, right? Like, what is it? Of course, there's a scientific perspective. And then you've got like an industry perspective and a research perspective. And like, there's all these different ways you can think about it. And I'll cover all of that over time. But I just wanted to like, just simply describe it to the hackers out there, folks like myself and folks like my buddies that I enjoy so much. All right, so I created a couple slides that goes through this. So I'm gonna switch to the slides right now. And I call these slides, do it backwards. Cause it's like so obvious. It's like, you know, a very simple epiphany that struck me. Okay. So uh, this, is, this is the core of everything, right? It's a simple pip install. And this is pip install jacklang today. Um, there was a time when it was pip install just like, yeah, I won't talk about that era of everything. Let's just talk about what it is today. And like, like really what we're, what seems to be the, it, it seems like we've come into the right answer as to how to do this. I hope, right? So we'll see. But this is what it is. You pip install jacklang and it's pure Python library. Right, um, there's actually no dependencies in it. If you look at the project.toml, it's 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 pure code. Um, I vendored just a, a little bit of stuff to make it non-dependent, um, and you know, um, yeah. Anyway, so you can like look at the code base uh, to kind of see what's actually in there. But but it's a pip install just jacklang, and then what you get from that pip install is a compiler and a runtime library, right? So let's look at how this works. So basically all of this is pure Python. So it runs on top of the Python VM. And so what we, we're trying to achieve like all this cool stuff with Jaseki, but really it's just pure Python running on the Python VM. It's part of our core design principles that we're doing an extension to the Python, to a Python ecosystem, right? Nimbly. We want to have full capability to innovate with what we're trying to achieve, but we also want it to be seamlessly and streamlined uh, in the ecosystem. Um, indeed, you know, whenever you compile a Jack module, it's almost exactly the same as compiling a Python module. It's it's very seamless, right? So uh, so basically, you have Jack Lang, and everything runs on C Python. Now we have the Jack compiler and the runtime library. Now Jack allows us to write Jack programs, right? So we can actually implement things using a new programming language called Jack or Jacklang. Some people call it Jacklang. I just call it Jack. Um, so what actually happens is this compiler, uh, you know, you invoke it, you invoke Jack. If you want to run a Jack program, you can invoke it with uh, a CLI tool that's part of the pip install Jacklang that is um, Jack, right? Um, and so, and if you import, if you import Jack, Jack Lang into any Python project, Jack's turned on, right? So as, as long as you import it, and this is the beauty of Python, Python has this pep that I think is so brilliant because it, it increases the flexibility infinitely, pep 302, that allows you to, um, kind of uh, add modifications to the native import methodology and pipeline uh, in Python. And so if you import Jacklang, your project can talk to Jack modules, but at the end, Jack modules are essentially Python modules. And so the Jack compiler outputs Python bytecode that executes with all of Python semantics. So you say, well, okay, if you just have this compiler that produces pure Python bytecode, 
then what are you adding to Python, right? And so the language adds new abstractions and new idioms. And so how do we realize that? New semantics in, for these new abstractions that's not realized in Python's VM. So the way that's realized is with, um, is with this runtime library over here. Let me see. Why is my, let me just get the high, the laser pointer so you can see my cursor. So this, this Jack runtime library is where we have all of the features, semantics, capabilities that goes beyond pure Python. So what happens is this, this Python bytecode that's generated is able to talk to the runtime, right? So it essentially generates Python bytecode with callouts into the same Jack Lang lib runtime. Right. And so the, those look like declarators or functions that's in Jack Lang. The, the, when you import Jack Lang, it looks like functions and so forth um, uh, and decorators and, and, and base classes and so forth inside of this pure Python bytecode. So this is really Python plus library code. Right. But it's all pure Python. Um, and OK, cool. And so there's some features, right, that allows Jack and Joseki to also manipulate beyond just kind of the code semantics, right? It actually tries to take control of some other systems. And so one feature, I'm not going into features in this video, but one feature is you can automatically um, kind of scale your application to multiple users with the semantics of the language. Very interesting, we could talk about that later. Well, that's also controlled by the runtime library. You see, the beautiful thing about Python is Python gives you incredible flexibility to interact with many different systems. I mean, if you think about it, there's Python bindings for Kubernetes. There's Python, when you look at PyTorch 2, there's a whole GPU compiler that's kind of, you can bind into your pure Python code. I mean, every model that, Every you know, AI model we work with today is implemented primarily in PyTorch 2. Of course, there's some TensorFlow and there's some, some other stuff, but you know what I mean. Um, and so like that all just lives in this Python ecosystem. And so you can actually control system software. You can control Kubernetes. You can control anything that you can bind into Python. So this stack allows us to have a lot of flexibility in how we innovate through the stack. Now, there's also a plugin interface that's built into this one pip install Jack Lang that can allow anyone, and it's using the same plugin interface as PyTest. It's a pluggy based interface. It's be I think it's beautiful um, how PyTest works. So nimbly you pip install PyTest xdist, and then all of a sudden you have distributed capabilities. You can do coverage. You can do all these nice things with this beautiful plugin interface. We use the same plugin interface to allow anyone to override or re-implement or, or innovate further on the semantics that we introduce at the language level, right, uh, of this Jack code, um, which interplays beautifully with Python code, right? And so um, when you go to the repo, you're going to see these various plugins that's built into the repo, right? So let's just look at the repo real quick. Let me get a, let me just get like a little uh, browser going here, GitHub, choo -choo -choo -choo. let's just get Jaseki up. So when you go to this repo, you'll see like these, these various little projects. So you, Jack Lang, that's the core we've been talking about, but then you'll see this by LLM, which is really cool. Uh, you'll see this Jack Cloud, which is also super cool. Of course, we have a VS Code extension. We're doing a mono repo. This was decided for testing. It used to not be a mono repo. <laughs> And I really resisted doing a mono repo, but what was happening is these repos were getting out of sync, and then you know changes to one would break, uh, you know, and you could say, oh, there's CI/CD integration testing. There's probably a better way, but we just went mono repo for simplicity, so we can run a battery of tests that tests across the uh, the various projects. Anyway, so these are plugins. BioLLM, Jack Cloud is a pro plugin, and if you noticed on the slide, we also had this plugin called Jack Streamlit. It's a very small plugin. It's actually, I think it's, in, it's not in a good place. This is kind of just from old school in this Jack folder. We actually have a f support folder. And in the support folder, we have this Streamlit plugin. It's, it's actually a very small little plugin that allows you to, you know, have better Streamlit integration, whatever. Um, anyway, so, so, we, so you can have this, these plugins as separate projects you can pip install. And so, you know, when we describe Joseki, we kind of mean the ecosystem of both Jacklang plus the plugins that we 
that we've built or that I, we kind of support, but I envision folks can, are going to ultimately one day build their own plugins and so forth. Anyway, that's a lot about plugins, but this is pre essentially the project architecture. So there's Jack Lang, and then we also have a plugin interface. And so we, we realize like this bio LLM capability um, with the by keyword uh, is realized using the by LLM plugin. And then Jack cloud is how we get native. Uh, you can scale your applications to millions of users without changing the code. So you can run it on one machine or a million machines without changing the code. Um, that's the vision, lots of work in progress going on. But um, anyway, so that's essentially the architecture of the project. Now, what were we, tr what are we trying to achieve? Now, when you, when I get into the features, um, I think they're, I think they're interesting. Uh, they're pretty cutting edge and we're building it to be real. We're building it to make lives easier out there. Um, I'm not going to get, I could, that's another long video to talk about each feature and I'll probably do a, a video for each feature. Uh, there's three, there's three main categories. Um, but what we're trying to achieve big picture is a stack a stack that can allow us to rethink how we build software in the era of complexity we're in today. Um, you know, the insight is um, we've been using the same abstractions and I'm going to skip, I'm actually going to skip forward a couple slides. We've been using the same abstractions from like the eighties and nineties for how we write software. And in the eighties and nineties, like so the applications we built were wildly different. As you can imagine, the internet wasn't even a thing during some of this era. You know what I mean? Um, our software didn't run. Almost every application today is some has a cloud component, right? Uh, any almost every app in, on your phone that you tap on your cell phone you tap has some server side component, or you know, ma many of the websites actually implement software that has sophisticated scale, massive scale, uh, and now. There's AI everywhere, right? Whether or not we're in love with it or not, there's, it's going to be a part of how people write software. A lot, every, all developers are becoming prompt engineers, unfor like fortunately, unfortunately, depending on how you look at it. So that's going to be a part of the work that devs are going to do when they're building software for Google Meta, you know, these top companies, right? So we, let's embrace like the new era of software and kind of think about how we can innovate across the stack. And so this simple piece of software, which is just pure Python and extends the Python ecosystem, uh, can allow us to innovate across many layers of the stack from the programming language design layer to the compiler infrastructure layer to the runtime systems layer with, RT, with the RT library and its ability to hook into other infrastructures like PyTorch or, um, you know, or do K8's bindings so it can control a cluster and all kinds of craziness to the system software, you know, managing the system software and then ultimately being able to manipulate how software is run on a machine. So, so we have an ability to design across layers or have ideas that it have implications to multiple layers and you know, reason about new idioms and abstractions that are um, orthogonal and nimble that can, that can be implemented through that stack just by, just by the beauty of the Python ecosystem and the flexibility it, it lends um, the developer. Now, there's another important reason why we love Python so much. It's because it's, it's really the language a lot of stuff is being built in, right? And it's really an ecosystem where we can have real impact. You know, we can, we can actually create value for developers in the world and computer science everywhere. So we, 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 uh, we're very excited about the, the kind of like Python first kind of um, decision. Although um, if, if you guys sidebar me, I think fundamentally, we're going to be ecosystem agnostic, maybe one day, but right now we just want to have impact um, and meet developers where they are. A lot of folks, almost everyone building AI applications or, and this isn't just for AI applications, but d d uh, distributed applications are building Python in Python, right? Um, so let's start there and just have impact there is kind of the philosophy and take advantage of the ecosystem benefits, like the flexibility we get to innovate. Um, 
Okay, so that's just sucky stack. Oh yeah, I already talked about this on the last slide. And uh, how can this be really nimbly and modern for us in a real way? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, and then the programming language philosophy is to extend. It's not to replace. Um, so we envision worlds where any super passionate, crazy Jack lover can implement everything that they can implement in Python and Jack. Um, but folks that just want to have one module that's, there's one Jack module there can do that as well. And we'll let folks pick and choose what the right tool is for the problems that they face. And so that's kind of our philosophy. Um, and we also, oh, uh, and we're going to talk about the actual uh, Jack contributions at some other point. And really, developers can choose to sit at either of these layers now. They can sit at the language layer um, uh, and enjoy some of the benefits you get from the PL design uh, improvements. And we believe that we've made a number of improvements from a language standpoint. Or you can simply use decorators, the functions, the base classes, and so forth to, to take advantage of the abstractions. But the contribution is the abstractions. The thing that we think might benefit the world will be these new tools that they can use. Much like with object-oriented programming with C++, you, know, you don't have to make everything object-oriented in every C++ project. You can choose when it makes sense to make something uh, an object or when you just need a struct and a function or when you just need a function, right? So, so you pick and you, you, you should be able to have these tools to, these are paint brushes to add to your arsenal of, of uh, when it comes to the beautiful creations you make in code. Um, so that's kind of like some of the philosophy of like how we think about this contribution. Um, and I already talked about this slide, but there's so much, there's so much to, um, there's so much that to explore, right? Uh, and you know, the, the way that we're working is we want to take each idea that we bring to the table and we want to take them seriously and really understand, um, how they should be built to create value for how we build software. Now there's a bunch of stuff I didn't talk about, right? You know, uh, that I'll have to talk about in other videos, but um, some of the ideation uh, really contemplates um, what happens when you can bring higher level information down through lower level rungs of the compute stack for optimization. Uh, new optimizations emerge when you can get, you know, more information uh, from the semantics and the syntax of a language. Um, and so we think interesting new types of problems can be solved. And we also think concerns that developers have to grapple with themselves today might be able to go away. Uh, and so that's an audacious thing to say, but we're already doing some interesting things with the notion of prompt engineering. We're also already doing some interesting things with the notion of schema design. Like, do you, do, like, can't computers learn the schemas? And I'm not talking about AI, I'm talking about runtime systems that can produce schemas from abstractions in a language automatically and manage that. Um, so there's a, a, you know, when it comes to the, the memory hierarchy or distributed, like, you know, if you imagine what, what imports can automatically become microservices? Some of these kinds of questions, right, for a distributed system, some of these types of questions are relevant to um, what's possible with a stack like this. And there's a few that is already in production uh, today, few, few value adds that's already in production today. So that's essentially, this video is much longer than I actually expected. Uh, I don't know, what, what are we at? I don't know, we're at much longer, 20 minutes. I was going to go for, for 10, but you know me. Um, anyway, I'll leave it at that. And uh, I look forward to the next video. I need to talk about the compiler itself. I need to talk about so much stuff, right? Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is what Jaseki actually is. All right, guys, until next time, peace.